Hey, what is up, everybody? It's Damron. We're playing Far Cry 2. We are on part 9 of my complete collectible and achievement guide, which brings us to the central portion of Laboa Sako. And in this video, we're going to cover this area as well as finish everything in the northern region of the game. So this is the ninth part. Let's get started. You're going to be coming in. Now, the thing I'm going to say is we have Central Pala. We also have the Slaughterhouse, Fresh Fish, Lumber, and Cockfights. Depending on your tutorial, you may have spawned in one of those locations. So during my tutorial, I actually got that diamond briefcase at the cockfights that may not be there for you okay it's all dependent on your tutorial mission and also if you remember in your tutorial you rescued a buddy which for me was in the slaughterhouse this could be different for you so there's two buddies left to rescue in the north and they're going to be at the locations that you didn't spawn at or that you didn't rescue a buddy in your tutorial so i spawned at cockfights and rescued someone at slaughterhouse if you didn't do that then you would find a buddy right here in the slaughterhouse of the main building so i'll kind of go through that again when we go through the other locations but essentially your fifth and sixth buddy are going to be dependent on where you started and where you did your tutorial so north of the slaughterhouse we're going to get our next diamond briefcase so you can see we're all the way in the north and western section of central laboa Sako, and we're just north of the slaughterhouse and if you just go up here you'll see this small shack building with a kind of rusted out car in front of it we're going to go ahead into the back side of that building you can either go around the side or go through it like i am whichever way but if you get to the back side of this building there's going to be a ladder that you can get onto the roof of this building where our next diamond briefcase will be. From that diamond briefcase, now we're just going to head east a little bit. So you're going to have to go back down to the main road. But you can see before you go to that bridge that crosses over the river to the left is a safe house. Again, these are on your map. You don't have to kind of find these. Uh, you just need to go to them, clear them out. And then as I've recommended in all the previous videos, be sure you're saving as we're playing through when we get to safe houses. Because we don't want to have to backtrack and recollect any collectibles should you happen to die. And this is a very specific one because the next diamond briefcase case is actually over here by the safe house but you can't actually get to it from here so you can see i'm at the safe house kind of on the east you know the west side of this river here and it's actually up on this you know land that is above the safe house and you can't get there there's no ramp there's nothing the way that you have to get there is actually across the river um if you go all the way to the top of this cliff up here there's a hang glider so if you look on the map you can see where i'm gone now so i've gone all the way across the river up at the end of this road okay but the way you have to get there is you have to follow the main road all the way around and when you get here you'll be able to basically go to the end of that road which will lead you to a cliff edge and uh you know I'll put down my map here so down there is the safe house and to the left it is, is that elevated land so go where i was um on the map and you'll be able to get a hang glider and you can now take that hang glider to get to the elevated land that's beside the safe house so that's why I highly recommend you save it before you're going after this, because if you mess it up, just reload your save and go back up there. But once you kind of get in the hang glider, just go to that elevated portion of land and crash land like I did. And you'll see a small wooden shack on that elevated land inside, which is our next diamond briefcase. All right, so once you've collected that diamond briefcase, now we're gonna head south from the safe house itself. Um, you can see we're basically south of that main road before the bridge. There's kind of a little you know, nook inside this uh, elevated rock edge, okay? So just go where I was on the map. And again, there's this small nook kind of going into the rock face. And in that is a rusted out car with our next diamond briefcase. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move back to the main road now. We're going south of the slaughterhouse to our next guard post. As I've mentioned in the previous videos, these guard posts aren't really tied to an achievement, but of course, scouting them out, you're gonna be going this way anyway. Scout them, you'll know what supplies are there, and they're also good points of reference as we're kind of getting all of these collectibles. So once you've scouted out uh, that guard post, let's get moving on to the next safe house. For me, this was my first safe house. Again, this one I actually got during my tutorial. You will unlock a safe house during your tutorial and for my playthrough it was this one so this isn't actually a new one for me but if you went somewhere else 
during your tutorial, then this may be one you still need to get. So keep that in mind. And as always, drop a save and let's get moving on to the next guard post, which is all the way south. So we're going to continue along that main road south from the safe house. Um, and you can see we're just going to scout this guard post, which is right there northeast of the cockfights another possible buddy location now is going to be in the cockfight so again for me i spawned here and i got my tutorial diamond briefcase here so there's not a buddy at this location for me however let's say you spawn on the east side and we're doing lumber and fresh fish as your tutorial mission then this could be a buddy location for you so again keep that in mind this is a little bit variable depending on where you start the game which the game is different per your character that you choose so once you have rescued that buddy if you needed to and got that guard post now we're going to go south of that guard post a little bit so you can see we're kind of just east off the main road in this patch of grass right here uh, just south of that guard post but if you go where i was on the map you'll see another small building that has a couple boarded up entrances obviously we need to whip out our machete and take out those wood boards so we can get inside and get our next diamond briefcase off the crates here All right, from that diamond briefcase, now we're just going to head straight north of the main road. So we're north of that guard post there. And just kind of at the turn where you're turning into the entrance of Pala itself, we're actually going to look north. And you can see there's a little gap between the two rocks in that area. So again, this is on the curve where all these kind of shop-like shacks are that nobody's manning. But there's a small path that leads down to the water if you're looking north from that curve. Not too far uh, forward, you know, you don't have to go to the water edge. Kind of hang a left and you're eventually going to find this diamond briefcase right behind these rocks here. All right, so now we're going to go inside Pala itself. Um, so the next two diamond briefcases are in here. And in Pala itself, there's actually two restricted buildings. One north of the UFLL HQ and one south of the APR HQ. And essentially, if you go into those restricted zones and you're spotted, you will be attacked by the enemies. So essentially, just go to those locations. And right now, you can see, I can see the diamond briefcase in that building. But I'm just going to kind of wait for a second until these two guys basically get out of the way and they can't see me. And then I can double or crouch walk into the building itself in order to get the diamond briefcase and you will get an indication that you're going into a restricted zone and it's essentially telling you what I just told you but as long as no one's looking you can run in grab the briefcase and then kind of run out don't run actually just kind of crouch walk Now, luckily for us, the one that is south of the APR building, you don't actually have to sneak into. Uh, again, we are in Central Pala, and if we go to the kind of southeastern section of the city, right, you can see we're south of the APR building. With this one, though, if you go outside of the building, so you can see where I'm at on the map, there's actually a window right beside the diamond briefcase, and if you get close enough to it, you can actually just open it from the window without actually going into the restricted zone. So this one, luckily, uh, we can just grab that, and we don't, we can kind of not worry about alerting anybody. So after you've gotten the two diamond briefcases in Pala, we're going to head south on the main road, kind of, you know, towards Mike's bar. And you can see we're on this first large curve. And if we're at that curve and you kind of look, you know, to the western direction, kind of head towards this large rock. And as you're heading there, you know, you'll see this kind of burned out car right beside the door is our next diamond briefcase. Proceeding south a little bit further, so we're just going to continue all the way to Mike's Bar. You've been here as part of your tutorial mission, but now we're going to come here and we're going to get our next diamond briefcase. So if you zoom in on Mike's Bar, you can see there's two what looks like buildings on the map on the northern part. One of those buildings is actually this dock here. The other one is a actual building. So if you go to that, you'll find a boarded up entrance. And as always with the boarded up entrance, take out your machete, swipe up those boards, and let's get inside and get our next diamond briefcase. All right, moving on from Mike's Bar, now we're going to head east. Just take the main road all the way into the lumber area. And so for me, again, this wasn't part of my tutorial mission. So in the lumber area, if you go and find this building here, now you can go in and you can rescue one of the last two potential buddies in the northern area. So for me, there is a buddy here because this one wasn't where I did any of my tutorial sections. Again, so uh, again, the two locations you haven't been are where your buddies are going to be. 
My name is Flora. All right, so head north from that buddy location. We're going to go to our next guard post, which you can see is at the four-way intersection here just north of the lumber area. So obviously scout that out uh, if you want to. Uh, but more importantly, this is a good place for us to get a couple more of the collectibles. So from that diamond briefcase itself, if you kind of look southeast, you can see I'm kind of looking in between the east road and the south road from the guard post kind of walk in this direction and you're looking for this rock here that's next to a tree okay so right here on the map you can see i just kind of went southeast uh so on the side of that rock is a you know chopped down log with our next diamond briefcase all right, moving just a little bit north from the guard post at the four-way intersection is our next safe house. You may or may not have unlocked this one if this was the side of your tutorial mission, but if you didn't and you've been following my guide, this is the final safe house for us to unlock the Wander achievement, which is for discovering and unlocking all safe houses in the northern section of the game. So once you've done that, now we're gonna continue along that main road. You can see we're just gonna head north from the safe house, cross over the bridge, and now we're kind of north of Pala. And you can see I'm kind of north of the main road here up kind of in this crook of that rock area so you can see it's elevated i'm kind of in this curved area and i'm looking for this car right here it's kind of wrecked up against this you know big tree if you find that in the area that i was right next to it is your next diamond briefcase Moving on northeast from that diamond briefcase, we're going to head to the fresh fish portion of the game. For me, this is the final buddy location. Again, mine were in lumber and fresh fish. Yours could have been slaughterhouse uh, and the cockfight. So it depends, again, on your tutorial mission. But for me, again, you're going to have to clear out this area. There's going to be a bunch of enemies here. But once you've cleared that out, now you can re uh, rescue your sixth buddy of the northern area, which is the final buddy of the north. So at this point we have 6 of 11 and we don't have any more buddies to rescue until we head to the southern portion of the game, Boaseco. So after you've rescued that buddy, we're going to continue moving northeast of the Fresh Fist. Now we're all the way kind of in the northeastern section of central Labosaco. So you can see I'm up in the grass there, you know, between this, you can see I'm in a path that's between a rock to my left and again, elevated rocks to my right. So it is a path. You can see I'm right here, you know, just specifically go exactly where I am on the map. And if you look kind of off to the east, you'll see kind of an alcove. It's a little base with some ammo, some health and whatnot. But also at the end of that on a rock is our next diamond briefcase and actually our final collectible of Laboa Sako. So he had finished off all of the collectibles in the northern region and now we're going to do a couple more things before we uh, do all the main missions again so the next thing that we're going to do is head back to mike's bar you've got all your jackal tapes so you need to come back here and go to the reporter and you should be able to talk to him and eventually use your interact button and once you do if you have gotten all the jackal tapes which if you've been following my guide we have all of them in the north you'll be able to give them to him and subsequently unlock the achievement investigative reporter for this but i'm a terrible negotiator also in Mike's bar are all the buddies that you've rescued. One of the other um, things that you need to do and go ahead and knock it out is the Lent a Hand achievement. And that is actually done by doing a buddy side mission, which is a little bit confusing because in the menu, there's a section that says buddy missions done. And there's also side missions. These particular missions that you pick up from your buddies in Mike's bar are, the, are gonna fall under side missions. And you know, you only have to do one. You could do a bunch of them, but there's nothing extra to gain. There's no achievement so just do one mission specifically from the buddy and once you've knocked that out now we're going to be doing the cellular tower missions so if you look at your map there's several locations with that kind of antenna symbol that's where you need to go to do the cellular tower missions it doesn't matter which one you go to you can pick up all of them from the north from the same one or you can move around the map and pick them up uh, but it doesn't matter okay you can go to any of those cell tower to pick up these missions and when you go there you're looking for this large you know tower Power, you know obviously here and at the bottom of it you'll have like a box that you can open and when you open that you'll actually turn on the cell tower and you'll get a phone call and the phone call is what's going to give you a mission now it's very important and i mean pretty critical that you listen to me right here about these cell tower missions when you get them it's going to give you a red icon to go to and can, you know basically you have to kill a target you can use the bus system you can do whatever you want to actually get there and kill the enemy but you can fail this 
if the target escapes, you'll fail the mission and you won't get paid in diamonds. And if you save it after that, you won't be able to go back and get those diamonds back. So when you complete it, you can see I just got paid 10 diamonds for completing it. If you do not get that, you are basically doing it after you failed it. If you fail it, you could go pick up the mission from the cell tower again, but you won't get paid. Okay, there's six cell tower missions that you need to do. You should be doing all of those and get 60 diamonds from it. Once you've completed all those, now we're going to be moving on to the convoy missions. And the convoy missions can be picked up by the gun symbol icon on your map, which is basically the armory. This is where you're going to be able to use your diamonds to buy upgrades on your guns and things from the computer. But also, if you go to the guy that's behind the cage, Great. you can I'm talk to him and he will eventually give problem. you a convoy mission. Yeah, Again, we did one mind. of these in part one, kind of right after the intro. But essentially, with these, you just have to go to the location and basically destroy the convoy that is there it's going to be a bunch of vehicles and by doing these you're actually going to unlock weapons so we there's an achievement to complete all the convoy missions aka to unlock all the weapons and that one's actually a little bit misleading because there's a point in the game later on where you automatically unlock all the weapons um so technically you don't necessarily have to do these but then you're not going to have the weapons at all throughout your playthrough so i recommend just going ahead and knocking these out and it's going to be a lot easier after you do your first two and you go purchase the rpg then these missions are a joke so after you've got enough diamonds and you basically finish the first two convoy missions you should go back to the armory unlock the rpg and now when you do the convoy missions you basically just go in the path that the convoy's coming at you, unleash hell on them, and the mission's over. So it's really easy to complete these, and you're going to go ahead and unlock the weapons and things for you to unlock and spend your diamonds on. So I recommend knocking these out, and it's the safer method. If you're one of those people that just kind of like to know that you're doing the requirements as you play, which I kind of am. But anyway, now that we have finished all of the cell tower missions and the convoy missions in the north, now we're going to be doing the main missions, okay? So we've pretty much done everything except for the main missions and the underground missions. And the thing that's very important about the, you know, main missions is that after you accept it and you're kind of exiting the building wherever you pick that up from the APR or whatever, when you come out, eventually you're going to get a phone call from one of your buddies. And they're basically going to give you essentially another option to complete this mission and that'll be indicated on your map by the blue icon so you talk to him you answer the phone if you actually look at your map what you're going to see is you're going to see a red icon and a blue icon and the blue icon is how you quote subvert the main mission and there's six missions from this point that we are going to quote subvert in the northern you know section of the game so every single time you play a main mission if you have the option to go to a blue or red icon aka you have an option to subvert the main mission then you you know you want to do that because if you don't then you're going to miss the ruthless achievement which is to subvert all the main missions in northern section of the game lobo Osako. so with these missions event you know you're essentially going to go to one of your buddies almost always at a safe house i believe um, and you're going to talk to them and they're going to basically give you another mission and throughout this mission you're again going to have the options to go to red or blue always go to blue and do the task that it's asking you to do so here i had to interrogate this guy if you actually walked in and shot him i would fail uh the buddy subversion so and it'll tell you that too it'll say mission failed if you failed it nonetheless you just kind of progress through the mission always making sure to do the blue side of it and when you finish the very first time subverting the mission you're going to get the best laid plans achievement but again we have to subvert all six in order to get the ruthless achievement um, at the end of the kind of main mission if you're doing the buddy style of it often you will have to go rescue that buddy or participate in some sort of extra portion uh, of the mission uh, so here you know he kind of read I think my buddy actually died right here and you know keep in mind if they die that's okay Okay. But essentially, when you're completing these missions, as I mentioned earlier, now these are the ones that are going to be tracked in the buddy missions done portion of your game stats, which is the third thing down on the left there. So now I'm at one of 12. Again, there's six in the north and six in the south. And all of those are tied to subverting the main mission. Now, in between doing every main mission, always check for any underground missions. These are the ones.
the one indicated by the fist symbol. So you can see that I'm in Pala. This one's in the central church here. And these underground missions, uh, there's only a couple to do in the north and the south, but there's an achievement to do all of them. And they're really easy. Just kind of pay attention. Every time you finish a main mission, just look and see if one's available. Again, there's only like two or three. But essentially, when you accept that mission, you'll be tasked with taking some passports uh, to some people that are trying to flee the country. And that's going to help you get some more of your malaria. These are going to be indicated by the yellow symbols on your map. Uh, the indicators for you to go to where you'll essentially just clear out the area and eventually give the paperwork to some people to complete that mission. So there's only a couple of these. Be sure you're doing that in the north in between your main missions. You will get the Bagman achievement when you finish your first one. So that's pretty much it for the underground and main missions. So again, as long as you just make sure 100% that you are doing the subversions after you finish the sixth subversion opportunity, you will get the ruthless achievement. Again, that is for the sixth main mission that you do with a buddy subversion. So at that point, your buddy missions will be six of 12. And again, that is mission 11 in that category. So now you just want to kind of play, enjoy the story. I'm trying to keep it spoiler free, but it just play through the main missions there's several more main missions but eventually you're going to have to cross a desert don't worry about the diamond briefcases in this section because you can't get all of them yet uh it won't let you explore this whole area we will come back to that don't worry so just keep playing the main mission until you finally get to the southern section of far cry 2 which is boa seiko and in part 10 we are going to start boa seiko you are kind of forced to do a main mission to start but then we will start getting all the collectibles in the southern region of Far Cry 2. So hopefully you all been enjoying this and hopefully I'll see you in part 10 as we go down south.